Jesus Christ, the God who is good no matter the struggle, the trial, or the test, the God who is worthy to be praised. Living a Christian life isn't all just blessings, 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 money, money, money. All these mega church pastors that are trying to convince you to just keep giving them more money, then God will bless you. That's a false teaching. Okay, you can't buy your way into God's graces. In fact, the Bible specifically tells us there's going to be struggles, there's going to be suffering, there's going to be trouble. Let's dive into the Bible and see what it has to say about this. Because through the storm, God is good. You can see it right here. All praise to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. God wants to comfort us. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Now let's look at that because it said right there he's going to comfort us through our troubles. Meaning he knows we're going to have trials. We see it here again. People can never predict when hard times might come. Like fish in a net or birds in a trap, people are caught by sudden tragedy. Just because we're going through a struggle does not take away how good our God is. And here's the real test. Are we going to turn to God in the struggle, even when things are going bad? Are we going to say, Jesus, I praise you? Because it's easy to praise God when everything's good. It's easy when everything's working out to just be like, yeah, God is good. What about when you're suffering, bro? Is God still good then? Because there's power in praising through the storm. There's power in that. Like it says right here, as pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. So many times during the struggle, we want to turn to our sin. We want to turn to other people. We want to turn to partying. We want to turn to all these things when really we need to find joy in the Lord's commands. Again, right here, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. There he goes again, talking about there's going to be difficult times. So all these pastors that are prophesying, saying, oh, this is just all blessings and this is just prospering. No, no, no. Jesus knew we were going to suffer. All right, let's normalize struggling as a Christian. The same way the men and women in the Bible went through struggles, we're going to too. But here's the beautiful part, guys. The Bible says God can work all for the good of those who love him. If you love God, that means you serve God. If you're truly serving Jesus, God can turn your situation around. God can change your circumstances around. God wants to bless you, but that's not all financial. What about peace, joy, comfort, happiness? God wants to bless you. God did so much for us already. What are you doing for God? What are you doing for God? What are you doing for the kingdom? Trust me, I know what it's like to be turning to the world for your joy or your peace or your happiness and the world leaving you empty. The Bible says that God provides a peace that the world cannot give, a peace that surpasses understanding. I know what it's like to be filled with the joy of the Lord. I know what it's like to wake up happy every day, blessed in the spirit. Yo, I know what it's like to struggle. Okay, I know what it's like to have the devil attack you, but we have to take active steps as Christians to fight the devil back, bring some praise to God. And win the battle. And then everybody wants to complain. Oh, God didn't do this for me. God didn't do that for me. Oh, why is God, if God's a good God, why would he let people go to hell? First off, God's already done everything for us. We just talked about it. What are you doing for God? When you're in that struggle, there's power in praising through that. Second, God doesn't send us to hell. Okay? We have free will. If you want to be in union with God on earth, you'll be in union with him in heaven. If you want nothing to do with God on earth, you'll have nothing to do with him in the afterlife. It's that simple. We get to choose. God's not sending you to hell. No, we get to choose. So listen, I love you guys so much. I hope you guys have an amazing day. If you're in that struggle right now, I want you to know that it's okay. The battle's not over. You're going to make it out of this, but you got to pursue Jesus through it. All right, so don't believe the lies. People, there's pastors that'll tell you, oh, you're struggling because you don't have enough faith. Oh, you don't have enough faith. That's why you're struggling. First off, they can't tell you how much faith you have. You might have the most faith you've ever had in your whole life. They cannot determine that. Second, the Bible that I read, the God I serve, says that faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. Mustard seed's one of the smallest seeds. It's so tiny, and that can move a mountain. So don't let no pastor tell you that you don't have enough faith, okay? I love you guys so much. I hope everyone has an amazing day. God is good through the struggle. God is good through the storm. And God has a plan. I hope you guys take care today. Preach out.